Why does a light ray appear to bend when it passes from air into glass? And why does a magnifying glass focus sunlight onto a bug? And just what is going on when your optometrist starts flipping lenses in front of your eyes, asking you if something looks better or worse? These questions can be explained with one physical principle, the bending of light rays in a process called refraction. So to understand refraction, let's take a look at a prism. When light strikes a transparent medium, say glass, some of that light passes into the glass. And whenever a light ray passes from one medium into another, like from air into glass, it changes speed. Now in a vacuum, the speed of light is about three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. But when it passes through something like glass, it appears to slow down. And the amount light appears to slow down in a particular medium is called the index of refraction. And index of refraction is defined as the ratio of speed of light in a vacuum and the velocity of light in a medium. And is given by the equation n equals c over v, where n is the index of refraction, c is the speed of light, and v is the velocity of light in a particular medium. Now the internet is full of people trying to explain why light slows down in certain mediums, and they're usually wrong. Suffice to say it's complicated, and for now we'll leave it at that. But back to the matter at hand. It's the slowing down and speeding up of light that causes it to bend. And to understand why, let's take a look at a kid on roller skates. So Susie, the roller skating stick figure, is headed down the sidewalk when she gets a little too close to the grass. When one of her skates hits the grass, the grass will cause that skate to slow down. Because one skate is traveling faster than the other, Susie will turn, leaving Susie the roller skating stick figure shooting this way across the grass. When going from air into glass, light does pretty much the same thing. Think of a ray of light not as a roller skating particle shooting through space, but as a wave which is made up of crests and troughs. Looking at the crest of the wave as it moves towards the glass, we can see part of the wave will pass into the glass and slow down before the rest of the wave front. And because part of the wave slows down before the rest of the wave, just like when Susie had one skate on the grass, the wave will appear to turn. This process of bending light as it travels from one medium into another is called refraction. And we define refraction as the change in direction of a wave as a result of it traveling at different speeds at different points along the wavefront. The amount a light ray bends as it crosses a boundary depends on three things. The angle at which the ray strikes the boundary and the speed of the ray in both of the mediums. And the relationship between these quantities is given by Snell's law where n is the index of refraction for each medium, and theta is the angle between each ray and the normal vector. So let's use Snell's law to calculate just how much light is going to bend as it passes through a prism. In this problem, an incident ray strikes a glass prism like this at an angle of 45 degrees from the normal. And we're going to use Snell's law to solve for the direction which the light ray travels through the glass. And once we've done that, we're going to solve for the direction the light travels after it exits the glass and goes back into the air. So if we want to use Snell's law to solve this problem, the first thing we need to know is the index of refraction in both the glass and the air. So given the index of refraction of air is 1.0 and of glass is 1.5, we can now use Snell's law to solve for the direction which the refracted ray is going to travel through this glass relative to the normal. So looking at our incident ray which is traveling through air, it has an index of refraction of 1 and an angle of incidence of 45 degrees. As the ray travels into glass, the index of refraction in glass is 1.5. And 
we find the light ray, once it's passed into the glass, is headed 28 degrees relative to the normal, like this. Where 28 degrees is the angle between the normal vector and the refracted ray. Now once this ray has traveled through the glass, it's going to try to exit the prism over here. When the ray exits the prism, it's going to be traveling from glass into air. So again, it will be refracted according to Snell's law. Now this time, the ray in the glass is the incident ray, and the refracted ray will be traveling into air. So here, for our index of refraction, we're first going to be dealing with the index of refraction for glass. And the angle of incidence, which the ray makes against this edge of the prism. Now, if you work through the geometry for this ray traveling through the prism, you'll find the ray strikes the edge of the prism at an angle of 17 degrees relative to the normal. And that's the angle we're going to use right here the angle of incidence against this boundary. Now the ray is traveling into the air, so the index of refraction in air is one. And we find the refracted ray makes an angle of 26 degrees relative to the normal vector. So we've seen that when light strikes a prism at an angle, it refracts in a certain direction. And when light strikes a lens, it refracts in the same way. The difference being that a lens is curved. So light is refracted in different directions at different points along the lens. And because of this, light can be focused to a point. But how and why light is focused to a point as it passes through a lens is a topic for a whole other video. So on that note, that's all for now.